Hey viewers, there's no shortage of mods that claim to improve Fallout 4's AI. I'm listing all the ones I'll be reviewing today on screen right now. You know I don't like to waste your time, so I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how most of these AI mods work. In Fallout 4 and all previous Gamebryo slash Creation Engine games, the AI is mostly hard-coded, but for whatever reason, during development Bethesda decided to externalize some variables related to the AI as game settings. So basically, what these mods do is tweak those game settings. They may also edit combat styles and AI packages, but even all this put together doesn't accomplish very much. Without scripts, these tweak mods cannot add any new behaviors to the AI, only alter the behaviors they already have. For example, while you can improve the AI's detection abilities, or make them fire in longer bursts, or make them throw grenades more often, it's not possible to make them do something smart like avoid mines, or deliberately flank around the player to attack from behind. The final pair of mods on this list, Pack Attack NPC Edition and Pack Attack Companion Edition, actually do use scripts to add new behaviors to Fallout 4's NPCs. So, Pack Attack is the obvious choice, right? Well, these mods are the best of the bunch for sure, but they have their own Achilles heel, script latency. If you're already using other popular script-heavy mods like Sim Settlements 2, Tactical Reload, Crime and Punishment, etc., and you try adding Pack Attack on top of that, you could be in for trouble. Mods that spawn tons of extra NPCs can also cause problems because Pack Attack will try to attach its scripts to every single one of those NPCs. When the Papyrus scripting engine is overloaded, scripts slow down or fail to run at all, and trust me, you don't want that. You can increase the F update budget MS value in your INI files to help, but then you're potentially losing frame rate. Long story short, I can happily recommend the Pack Attack mods as long as you have a good CPU and you're not running multiple script heavy mods alongside it. Otherwise, the rest of the mods on this list could serve as a lightweight alternative if you're looking for some specific changes. So let's take a look at all of these mods in depth. I tried to give them all a fair shake and spend a few hours with each of them, but since there's only so many hours in the day, obviously I couldn't test the entire main quest to make sure these mods don't break it. I definitely can see the potential for some of these mods to break quests, but it's not such a big deal if they do because, aside from Pack Attack of course, Every single one of these mods is safe to uninstall. Game settings don't get baked into your save game, so uninstalling is as simple as closing the game and disabling the plugin. The next time you launch, everything will be back to normal. Anyways, I'm digressing too much. Let's finally look at our first mod, Real.ai. Jeez, where do I start with this one? It's been split up into three different mods. Let's look at Real.ai itself first. This is purely a game settings tweak mod, it doesn't touch anything else. In general, Real.ai's game settings are far more extreme than other tweak mods, and it tweaks many settings that other mods don't touch. I can't go over every single setting because it would be boring, it would take forever, and to be honest, I don't even know what some of these settings do because there's no documentation available online. But here's the Cliff Notes explanation of what this mod actually does. Various settings have been changed to effectively reduce light levels across the board, especially in interiors. Light levels are also no longer as important in the detection formula. Keep in mind when I say light level, I'm only talking about AI vision. This mod won't actually darken the picture on your screen or anything like that. These changes make sneaking much easier since you won't have to worry about staying out of the light as much as you would in vanilla. Conversely, the detection ranges for NPCs have been increased to allow them to detect and engage targets from up to 15,000 game units away, about as far as the actor fade distance at ultra settings. With this mod, you're going to be hearing a lot more distant gunfire, as NPCs that would normally ignore each other due to the distance between them now start fighting the moment they load in. Perhaps to compensate for these changes, NPC perceptiveness and FOV have both been greatly reduced. Nobody seems to have any peripheral vision anymore. This mod makes stealth even easier than the vanilla game. NPCs with automatic weapons will fire in longer bursts, perhaps to simulate suppressive fire. And enemies with grenades have a higher chance to throw them. Due to other tweaks, they won't be as accurate with their grenade throws, however. This mod also increases the corpse removal timer from 8 hours to 168 hours. 
I don't like seeing changes like this that have nothing to do with AI, but apparently corpses have a maximum upper limit anyways, so this change won't affect performance much. The sum total of all of these tweaks is, you've got AI that can be cheesed more easily in stealth, but they can and will initiate combat from much greater distances. I think this mod should have been called chaos.ai, because all it does is turn the commonwealth into a constant combat arena. There's definitely going to be a lot more lead flying at you if you use this plugin, but most of it will harmlessly miss or do next to no damage because of distance drop-off, so in the end I can't say this mod is any more difficult than the vanilla game. Real.ai Untethered edits a few AI packages that allow NPCs to wander about 10 to 20 times farther away from their starting locations than normal, which further adds to the random chaos already caused by Real.ai. The Real.ai Dialog mod is a script that allows you to talk to NPCs during combat, which is only necessary because combat now happens unexpectedly all the time thanks to the previous two mods. In conclusion, if you like random craziness, Real.ai might be the mod for you, but don't expect a miracle out of it. Second up, we've got a very old mod called Arbitration. Uniquely, this mod has a faux mod installer with a lot of options. Most of them have nothing to do with AI, though. You can adjust incoming and outgoing damage multipliers and increase walk speed or reduce reload speed. The only option relevant to AI in the faux mod is increasing detection distance, if you enable that, the AI will exhibit the same chaotic behavior you can find in real.ai. On the whole, however, Arbitration doesn't edit nearly as many game settings as real.ai, and its values are not as extreme. Sneaking will be harder if you choose to increase detection distance, and regardless, gunfire will make more noise than before, which makes using a silenced weapon essential to maintain stealth. Light levels have at least been reduced in both interiors and exteriors, so hiding in the dark will be more effective than before. You'll have to hide in the dark a lot longer though, since this mod heavily reduces stealth point regeneration. Stealth points are kind of like hit points. When you lose them all, you get detected, and they regenerate over time. The brackets on the stealth indicator are actually a visual representation of you gaining and losing stealth points and you'll notice it moves much more slowly with arbitration installed. This mod does at least throw you a bone by increasing the amount of time NPCs are forced to wait in between grenade throws, preventing them from spamming grenades at you. Another nice change has been made to those nasty Molotov cocktails that are so frustrating in early game survival mode. Arbitration's Molotovs do almost no damage on impact, but they have a long-lasting effect that does damage over time. This is what Molotovs should have been like in vanilla Fallout 4. Beyond that, this mod also edits combat styles. It greatly increases the strafing multiplier and adds the flanking flag to most NPC types. The effects of these changes are unclear to me, I didn't really notice any difference. But I did notice something unbelievably, incredibly stupid. By increasing the offensive multiplier to 1 and the defensive multiplier to 0, NPCs no longer are able to block. That's right, they can no longer block your melee attacks, they can only attack themselves. In the end, I think this mod is outdated and shitty. The only good thing it does is change how grenades work, but there's definitely better mods for that in 2023. Third up, we've got the Stealth and Detection System. This is another pure game settings tweak mod, designed to make Fallout 4's stealth system easier. It has six different versions, but I only had time to test the base version. I think the alternative versions adjust stealth point recovery and increase search timers. Anyhow, like I said, this mod has one goal, make stealth easier. And it achieves this goal by reducing light level's impact on detection and making interiors an insane 50 units darker than vanilla. The absolute maximum light level has also been gimped, so even during a clear day outside, you'll be able to sneak around with ease. Enemy search radiuses have been increased, but this doesn't really help the AI find you, so it's more of a neutral change. Lastly, like real.ai, this mod reduces NPC FOV, but not by quite as much, they still have some peripheral vision. If you've always struggled with stealth in Fallout 4, this could be the mod for you, since its changes without a doubt make staying undetected significantly easier. But if you think it's already too easy to become practically invisible in the vanilla game, this is a mod to avoid because it'll just make things worse. 
Next up, we've got Search and Destroy, which is a very old mod. It was last updated in January 2016, only a few months after Fallout 4 came out, and it only changes a handful of game settings. It increases detection ranges, but not by nearly as much as Real.ai or even Arbitration. It also edits Stealth Point Regeneration, reducing it to half the vanilla speed, which is still faster than Arbitration. And that's it. Yep, this mod does nothing, except make stealth a little bit harder, and maybe it causes a few more random fights between NPCs. But that's it. It's not worth using. Also not worth using is our fifth mod, More Realistic Stealth and Sneaking. It's another older mod that only changes a few game settings. It makes your stealth points regenerate more slowly, and enemies will investigate disturbances for a little longer. And that's literally it. I wasn't able to discern any improvements from using this mod, so let's just move on. Next up, we've got Advanced AI Tweaks. I must say, this mod is second only to Real.ai in how extreme its game settings values are. And unlike Real.ai, almost all of this mod's changes are designed to make the game not only more chaotic, but also harder. This mod more than doubles the light level's effect on detection, making light a serious pain in your keister if you're trying to sneak around. Light levels have at least been reduced in both interiors and exteriors, but that doesn't negate this change completely. Detection penalties for running have also been increased, and like arbitration, gunshots make three times as much noise. Enemies throw grenades a little less often, again, same as arbitration. And also, just like arbitration, this mod edits combat styles, and it makes the exact same stupidly insane mistake of setting the defensive multiplier to zero which means NPCs can't block melee attacks anymore. I would highly recommend ignoring advanced AI tweaks, and instead taking a look at our next mod, 4S GIMP's AI Edits. This mod is based on advanced AI tweaks, but it doesn't make the AI unable to block, and it is generally more conservative with its changes. 4S GIMP's settings are usually halfway in between vanilla Fallout 4's and advanced AI tweaks settings, so stealth is a lot harder than vanilla, but not as hard as advanced AI tweaks. Detection distances have been increased, but only by a little bit. Gunfire is louder than vanilla, but not as loud as advanced AI tweaks or arbitration. Combat styles have been edited, but beyond making AI slightly more accurate shots, I'm not sure if these edits do any good. There's really not that much to talk about with this mod, since it doesn't have any standout features, it just increases the AI's abilities in a sensible manner, which makes it a good choice for those who want an AI mod that's not going to break quests and turn the Commonwealth into a war zone. Our penultimate mod is Combat AI Empowered. I think this mod is trying to be the best of all worlds, taking inspiration from every other tweak mod we've seen up until now. If you grab its Game Settings Upgrade optional file, it's very similar to Real.ai, but without the extreme detection distances and broken peripheral vision. Stealth should be slightly harder with this mod installed, whereas Real AI makes it much easier. Just like Real.ai, enemies will fire in longer bursts and throw grenades somewhat more often, but this mod also takes some cues from Forrest Gimp's AI edits by making gunfire louder and editing combat styles to increase AI accuracy a little bit. This mod's changes look really good on paper. I wish I had more time to test it out, but from what I've seen, it's great. I would put this mod on the same level as Forrest Gimp's AI edits. If you can't use Pack Attack, or you want the AI to be slightly more of a challenge with Pack Attack installed, use either this mod or Forrest Gimp's mod, and forget the rest. And that leaves us with Pack Attack. The Pack Attack mods are unfortunately not on the Nexus. You have to go to a Discord server to get the download link to them. It's well worth it, however, because unlike all these other mods, Pack Attack uses scripts to add new behaviors on top of the vanilla AI. It doesn't touch any game settings or affect the vanilla AI in any way, but despite that, these mods have tons of features, almost too many to cover. Pack Attack allows NPCs to set up ambushes, they can avoid grenades, they're now affected by inclement weather, you can add raiding parties and extra NPCs to the Commonwealth, there's even an arena mode where you can fight against waves of NPCs. These mods are chock full of awesome features. The greatest feature though, in my view, is Bark Control. What it does is make enemies talk far less often, especially when they're alone. This is a godsend. Pack Attack NPC Edition is almost worth it for this feature alone. 
There's also the excellent dynamic confidence system. In vanilla, NPCs have a static confidence stat that ranges from cowardly to foolhardy. Cowards always flee from combat, and fools never do. Pack attack increases NPC confidence when they believe they're winning a fight, and reduces it when they start believing they're losing. Pack attack also adds what it calls the menace system. Basically, the more enemies you kill inside an interior area, the more alert the rest of the enemies become, and the harder it is to remain in stealth. With pack attack, enemies can continue to search with their guns drawn, even when the HUD indicator tells you you're still hidden. And even when the HUD says danger, sometimes enemies seem unaware of where you exactly are. Apparently this is working as intended. You're either supposed to remove the stealth indicator when using this mod, or disable the auto alert feature. I didn't have time to test this, but if you're using the West Tech Optics mod, NPCs with night vision optics in their inventories will automatically equip and unequip them depending on the light level. When wearing night vision goggles, NPCs won't suffer detection penalties from low light levels. Pack Attack NPC Edition adds a few new grenade and mine types to mess with the AI. There's radiation grenades that make enemies run away from where they're thrown, distraction grenades that make enemies move towards where they're thrown, and flash mines and grenades that temporarily blind enemies. You can craft the new grenades at a chem lab, or find them in leveled lists. Note that they've been added to grenade leveled lists manually, so if any other mod manually adds its own grenades to leveled lists, you'll have a minor conflict on your hands. If you get Pack Attack Companion Edition, you'll notice that your companions won't throw grenades anymore unless it's safe to do so. They will also proactively engage enemies instead of waiting for you to shoot. Companions each have their own personalities now, which determines the weapon types they prefer to use. The absolute best thing about the Pack Attack mods is their configurability. Most of the features I've talked about can be turned off or adjusted if you don't like them or if you want to reduce script load. Yeah, I hope I've sold you on the Pack Attack mods. The worst part about them is waiting two hours to get a role in a Discord server you don't want to be a part of. But once you're past that, everything is good. That's it for this video. I really tried my best to find out what these mods actually do, and not just repeat whatever claims mod authors make, because sometimes they're incorrect. But I'm sure you've heard enough about stealth points and combat styles for a lifetime. And so have I. Next week, I'm reviewing heavy weapons, missile launchers, miniguns, railguns. It's gonna be great. Until then, doodles.